Let's get the latest details on what's going on in South Sudan. Michael Baleka joins us now live from Kampala. He's been keeping a close eye on developments over there. Um, Michael, let's start with uh, the evacuation. Uh, are all Ugandan nationals out of the country? Were there any Ugandan casualties in the process or in the, the fighting we've seen over the last couple of days? Uh, Rama, news coming in uh, from Nimule at the Uganda-South Sudan border is that the first batch of more than 4,000 Ugandans successfully crossed into the country today, uh, this afternoon, under the escort uh, of the Ugandan Armed Forces. Sources tell us that uh, the convoy was almost a kilometer long with people riding, some on top of the trucks, others were riding motorcycles. Uh, uh, these were hundreds of motorcycles and personal cars. Uh, we understand the military was forced to use a reconnaissance plane to ensure the security of the convoy from, from the airspace. Uh, we have been told that a second batch of evacuees is expected tonight and uh, more will be coming in tomorrow. However, the number of Ugandan casualties in the conflict uh, remains unknown. A uh, quick follow-up to that, Michael. Do, do we have any idea exactly how many Ugandan nationals need to be evacuated? I mean, if the first batch is 4,000, you've got two more coming in. I mean, that does sound a trace value, like there are at least 10,000 or so Ugandan nationals in South Sudan. Well, uh, Rama, the, the, actually, Uganda does not know how many uh, so how many uh, of its citizens are in South Sudan? They are spread out in many parts of South Sudan in the 10 states. They put the number to, om to almost 2 million uh, Ugandans out there. So the, the UPDF actually today said that they, they couldn't believe it, the, the number of people they found at, 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 the, at the collection center where they got them. So, and these are just a few people who are coming from parts of Juba and outside Juba who came in. So right. actually, I think the number is big, but we're not sure how many, the, the, the Uganda does, is not sure how many uh, people are, are in South Sudan. Uh, indeed. Let's move on though. Um, how, much, how much business has been lost here as a result of this latest flare-up uh, of violence? And, and assuming the ceasefire does hold, how quickly can business resume, especially uh, along the border? Rama, it's too early to tell, according to the Trade Ministry, that uh, the extent of the loss for business co following the, co the conflict in just a few days is not easy to estimate. But just to give you a little background, uh, the value of Uganda's exports uh, dropped from about $1.2 billion in 2008 to just about $350 million last year. This is 2015. This drop came as a result of a similar conflict in, two, in 2013, and business has since remained slow since then, and, uh, due to, uh, and this is due to uncertainty of the security of South Sudan. Uh, on when businesses can resume will depend on the South Sudan government to convince investors that the country is safe and that the ceasefire will hold. Otherwise, businesses remain cautious uh, to trade. Indeed. One last question for you, Michael. Um, given the, the long-running civil war and the apparent inability of South Sudanese leaders to stop this incessant violence, is South Sudan a place where Ugandan firms and entrepreneurs still want to do business in? Is it still a place where, as it was, say, in 2011, a lot of East African retailers and businessmen looked at it and said, this has potential, let's go in there? Rama, there is no doubt South Sudan remains a strategic trading and investment partner for Uganda, and trade has enormous benefits for both countries. The exact number of Ugandans running formal and informal businesses and services in South Sudan well, is unknown, but of course the U.S. Embassy estimates it's two, uh, I mean the Ugandan Embassy in South Sudan estimates that it's two million Ugandans who are doing business there. And the recent conflict just in 2013 and now has led to a loss, uh, to loss of uh, sales, revenue, income, increased unemployment, loss of property, and reduced market opportunities. So, so, so many Ugandans uh, will not be able to pay their loans uh, this time around. They will not be able to, 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 to meet their month monthly loan repayments. They may have to weigh options whether to stay 
or leave the country. Uh, they were not compensated uh, in the recent conflict, in the 2013 conf conflict. This may come in this conflict too. And the trade ministry is already encouraging and advising them to look for other markets in the East African, uh, in the East African community, in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in Burundi, Kenya, and maybe Congo. Uh, but they think uh, that uh, South Sudan is no longer safe and probably it's a risky market to put your money. Indeed, we'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you for that. That's Michael Baleke in Kampala. He's been keeping tabs on developments, of course, across the border in South Sudan. That's a story we'll be following very keenly uh, over the next couple of days. Now